It's a really exciting day today because we're gonna be making the cuts and lifting this roof up 12 inches. So I wanted to go ahead and do a brief walkthrough, explain how we've gotten to this point, remind you of some of the demo work that we've done, and then give you some of my favorite tips and tricks to make this process as fun and easy as possible and give you a bus that's at least as square as the one you started with. Let's take a look and I'll show you how we got here. So obviously the first thing that we did was remove all of the rivets around the caps, demo the ceiling, and remove the windows. And that includes the trim pieces between the windows. With all of those pieces removed, it's time to make what I call the hard cuts. And these are the four cuts in the front. Three and four. And then the two corner cuts back there. And I'll show you what I'm looking for here. So it gets really confusing if you look. Instead of cutting, you know, right in the middle of the window, we can't do that here because we've got to maintain this door opening. So I go in the window still, just above the door, as you can see here. All right. And what's tricky is that we had to cut these without damaging the skin. So I actually peel the skin away so that I can get my blade in here and get a nice cut without damaging the skin. Same is true up here. And as you can tell, I've still got my wooden wedge here keeping the skin off of the, uh, the hat channel but I also needed to cut the hat free of this door frame structure because I want this to stay. I do not want this going up with the rest of the roof. So it's not the prettiest work in the world. We'll stitch it back together with welds uh, once we're done, but uh, that is now free. Another thing to look out for, a lot of times there's gonna be these additional supports in the front. You wanna cut those loose because these are going up. And then more of the same over here. I cut this hat right around here, loose from this support. And then same story on this side. This hat has been cut free from this support and that puts our cut line in the window but above this frame, which is really nice. The rest of the cuts are gonna be happening right across the windows here. Super nice, very easy to do. And then back here, the final cut here you know, I use my wooden wedges again to pry this skin off and make my cut here. And so this part of the bus will be going up and we've popped all these rivets across here. So that's gonna let this sheet and this structure here with my hand on it remain where it's at and everything above it's gonna go up. Cut these additional supports in the corners and then it's the same story on the other side, exactly the same over here. Ty's welding in our lifting slides back there. It's the first one in. There's going to be one in each corner essentially. And what we've gone ahead and done is ground away all the paint and galvanizing where our cut lines are going to be. And that's so that when we're welding in our hat channel extensions, A, we're not breathing in all of that shit, but B, it's going to help keep the impurities out of our weld so we'll have a stronger weld. When you're making the cuts on these hat channels, you really want to have a nice square cut. Uh, otherwise, you're going to be adding inches. And it's hard to do by hand with a sawzall. And there's nothing wrong with using a sawzall or a cutoff wheel if you got to do this. But Ben Jackson, being the kind of guy he is, he made a jig. And um, this jig allows you to use a regular circular saw with a ferrous blade, a steel cutting blade. And essentially, it lets you make a plunge cut perfectly perpendicular. It's clamped in right there, perfectly perpendicular to the cap. So he's gonna run and grab that saw, and it's it's quite the exciting thing, actually. Yeah. So it goes in there like that, and then it plunges down with the blade. And I'll show you what that looks like from the inside. Like so. It's 
So we'll do that six more times on each side. That gets you a nice, perfectly perpendicular, very straight cut. And we'll, we'll clear that out with a grinder. So this is what happens when you get the three of us on this for literally an hour and 10 minutes. We are fully cut on all the hats, beautiful square cuts. We've got our lifting jacks welded in place, or I guess I would call them lifting guides. And then here we've got our farm jacks that we're gonna be using to lift it. Um, the way these uh, lifting slides work is pretty ingenious and I'm not here to take credit for all of this. This is a design that was fabricated by a guy named Chris Catton that was, that I first saw done by a guy named Elliot Nace, I believe is how you say it, on the school bus forums um, way back in the day. I'm talking 2012 or maybe even sooner. But basically, if you see here, this is a tube inside a tube and it's got a little pin that sticks out and that pin slides up in the slot. So the jack will jack the pin up and that's gonna force the top to come out of that tube. And when it gets to the height that we want, there's actually a locking collar here. And so when it gets to our plus 12 inches, we'll go ahead and lock that collar down. Yeah, we're good, we're good. Okay. It's just a little, little behind. Okay. You want to click that one again? Click on that one, maybe. Let's just go down. You want to go? Uh, this one like keeps losing uh, tension. So, like, I think this roof is trying to raise itself. Yeah. Like this I'm not. Out. I'm not even on it. I don't understand that at all. Maybe it's jammed in this or something. Well, I mean, it's, that's not a problem. Nope. Just keep it's just weird. That's about 12. Just kidding. <laughs> Looks pretty uniform to me. Yeah, it does. Let's see where we're at. Five. That's, that's four. 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 Oh, four. Four. Technically. You got some good grinding going there. Over here? Yeah, I think that one deserves another clip. Yeah. Those are some good grinds, but. You like them? Yeah. Those are gonna weld up real sharp. Okay. Ready? Okay. This one's like that's weird. And like why is it this far down? This one's up here. See what I'm saying? Big red. Okay, you ready? Just at 12 here. This one's down a little bit. Can we go up? I think that one's gonna go up. It's like eighth short. Only an eighth? That one's, over. That one's a quarter over. Well, <coughs> should we just uh <coughs> just do that. Just do it. Jig. 
That looks pretty sharp. There's 12 even worth it, man. Let's just let's double them up. <laughs> 24. Well, here we are, 12 inches taller. And uh, sh this will give you an idea of how these slides work now. So once they extend, we tighten this collar down and that locks it in place. And you can see here, this is where we had the, uh, the farm jack attached to lift it up. And then we went ahead and just stuck all of these awesome hat channel extensions right in place. Thank you, schoolie.com, for making such precision fit pieces. And then one thing we do here, Ty was just tightening this up. So we actually make a jig here out of a piece of thick steel tube. And then we brace it on both sides. And then we use clamps to force all of these sections into plane together. So I'll try to get you an angle sighting down the side of the bus. You can see how this hat closes to us. It wants to kind of go out and up. And if you look at the one that Ty's got clamped there, the face of that is nice and straight. So Ty's got these bad boys in place using the big C clamps. And we make two of those jigs so that once Ty starts welding, one person can be clamping the next section of hat in place. And that's what Ben's doing here. The slides are really good for keeping us indexed in the vertical direction, but as we start welding these in, we use ratchet straps to adjust the kind of diagonal orientation of the roof on the body. And so what I'm doing here, I've got this pulling the roof to the right, and I know we need to go that way because I'm using, this is just a framing square here, and I line it up with a rivet hole. I'll go off that big hole there. And I go up top to see where that coordinate correlates to. And you see, I've actually got it overcorrected a little bit to the, to the right. Um, and that's because we're gonna weld it in this position. And then when I relieve the tension on the straps, it's actually gonna correct a little bit back to the left. And I've got the same thing going on, but in the opposite direction in the back. So. Uh, the roof in the back was a little bit, well, I'm going to say it needed to go to the right, but really it needed to go to the driver's side, which is the opposite of the direction the roof needed to go up here. So we've got those in place, corrected a little bit past, perfect. And once Ty gets a couple more hat channels welded in, I'm going to go ahead and relieve tension on the straps, see where we're at, and then readjust again. Here's another thing I like to check as we go. I'll get a nice piece of heavy gauge uh, flat stock or tube, and you can put it up against 
there's my tube. You put it up against your hat channels and it'll tell you if there's a gap there, it'll tell you which direction you need to go. So you can see it looks like this side of the bus is a little bit forward. So it needs to come back so we can close that gap up. And that's another thing that we can adjust with straps as we go. So just a lot of checking as we go, because once you get a lot of these welded in, it's very hard to, uh, very hard to tweak things. Well, heck, it's uh, not even five o'clock and this bus has already been cut, raised, and then welded back into place. I want to uh, take a second and not only show off what we did, but also walk you through some of the pitfalls you might face if you're attempting this on your own and tell you how we address those as we go. Um, as you can imagine, there's a lot of ways it can go wrong, but that means there's a lot of ways you can make it go right. So let's take a look at this. So the first thing and maybe the most obvious thing is you want to make sure that you're completely cut free. And you know, I had actually made the mistake and I didn't, didn't get this cut free. So when we were going up, we were binding. That first inch is always the most exciting one. The next thing you want to do as you're going up is making sure that all of this adhesive and goop is loose. And sometimes it'll just pop and go on its own. And other times it's best if you can get in there with a scraper or a wedge or a pry bar and pop it loose beforehand. You don't want to cause a crease or something by putting a lot of tension on it with your lifting jacks and making it bind. So as you're going up, you know, as you saw, we just keep an eye on things and try to keep it as level as we can. And then once you're in place, you want to lock it down. Now, when we did our raise, you know, we jacked from near the back and uh, near the front, which means as you're going up, there's a potential that it's going to get a little bit of a dip in the middle. So when we go up, we shoot for our target height, which in this case was 12 inches. We shoot for that at our middle hat channel. Okay. So that means that sometimes at the end, you might have 12 and an eighth, 12 and a quarter, hell, 12 and a half. Go for 12 inches here. And then we go ahead and insert our hat channel extensions there and then drop the bus back down or drop the roof back down until the gap between these closes up. And then you know you're at 12 inches here. And odds are good that everywhere else, you're gonna be at least at 12 inches or better, which means you can pop those hat channel extensions in and get to welding. Moving on, if you look down the side of the bus here, you can see that those all side up and disappear at the same time, which means they're nice and straight and in plane, okay? We get that by using that jig I showed you, which clamps to the face of these and presses tight against them and forces the top, the bottom, and the extension to all become in plane together. That's hugely important. Um, you need to have something like that jig to, otherwise you're gonna end up with ribs that bow out, okay? That's gonna be a major bummer for you. It's gonna look like garbage. Um, love the jig, gotta do the jig. Um, this isn't a welding class, so I'm not gonna get super deep into this subject, but it's really important that you get excellent penetration on your welds. And Ty knows what he's doing and he does a great job. But um, one thing that really helps us get that, see if I can, get an angle that kind of shows you, there are these inserts that schoolie.com hat channels come with. That lets you just crank up the heat and get a really good weld on there. And a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not gonna do a roof raise because it messes with the structural integrity of the bus. Sure it does, but if you're welding these on and you're doing a good job of it and you've got those backing plates, the end result is gonna be something absolutely as strong as the original hat channel, okay? not something you need to worry about <clears throat> but make sure you've got um, the paint ground off and the galvanizing ground off and you've got these backing plates in place okay that's going to make a big big difference for you and then lastly as we go you see this strap here and there will be one in the front when we um, wrap up the framing up there but um, I use a framing square off of a nice perpendicular angle. You can see where it's po poking up there. And what I'll do is I'll take this square, I will put it so that it matches up with a rivet hole. Okay, down here, let me see if I can pick one that's a little more obvious. Doo, doo, doo. 
So it's right on the edge of that rivet hole. And then if you look up here, we're coming up on the edge of that. Now, it's not perfectly dialed because we're focusing on the back for the rest of the day, but when we come up here to finish putting in this hat channel, this hat channel, and these braces, I'll move my strap up here and we'll get that perfectly lined up so that our roof stays square. Very important. Don't want to miss that. Um, so I think those cover a lot of the, the big issues. You know, you definitely want to check for square and making sure that uh, these are perpendicular as you go. It's a lot easier to fix, you know, if you're constantly checking than after you've welded in half of your hat channel extensions and you're going to have to cut them out or really just fight a lot of tension to fix it. So hope you enjoyed following along on that. That's definitely the fun, fast part of this project. Um, tomorrow, Ty and I are going to finish framing out the back and get started on the back skin. And once that's locked in place over the weekend, I'll be wrapping up framing and getting the rest of the hat channels in on the front so that next week, hopefully, we can finish skinning this. I would be remiss if I didn't hit one last thing, and that is where you make your cuts on the ribs. There are folks out there who think you got to zigzag them high, low, high, low. Uh, in order to keep your bus strong. And that just isn't the case. If your welds are done properly and if you've got backers on there so that you can get a nice hot weld with good penetration, the welded portion here is going to be stronger than the portion of the hat that it's connected to. There's no reason to stagger that. And you're just gonna be making a lot more work for yourself. And that means if you're using a jig, you're gonna have to make two jigs, one for the highs and one for the lows. So no need to stagger. Cut them straight. Well, that's going to do it for this video where we covered the cut, raise, and weld portion of a roof raise on this 1996 Thomas school bus. The next video, we're going to talk about forming the back cap, which will also apply to the front cap, skinning the bus, what kind of rivets you want to use, how to rivet them, and what to look out for so that you get the best, straightest job on your rivet skinning project as possible. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.